only in geometry, what you need to know. First, let's take a look at this game I'm playing. I'm playing darts right now, and I'm actually really close to winning. But to win, I need to get six points or more in my next throw. And now I'm curious, what are my odds, what are my chances of hitting somewhere within this inner circle that'll give me six or more points in my next throw? And actually, you can solve this using geometry. So in this episode, we're going to first talk about plane geometry, things like circles, you know, triangles, squares, and then we'll move on to coordinate geometry and talk about things like slopes and lines. Let's get started. Let's take a look at the top plane geometry topics. Now you can see there are a lot of topics here, but there's a lot of plane geometry on the ACD. There are 14 of these out of 60, so nearly a quarter of the test is plane geometry. We're going to go over all of these concepts because I want you to feel really, really good about them before we head into the test. We're going to talk about lines and angles, triangles, circles, squares and rectangles, and we're going to do a multiple figure problem, a problem that combines two or more shapes. On to lines and angles. These are just a couple things that I want you to remember, and I'll just, I'll just draw this out really quickly. Angles along a line add up to 180 degrees. You probably remember this from math class, but just in case. You know anytime you've got your line, you've got two or more angles on it, these two angles here are going to add up to 180. So for example, if this was 120, this angle here would be 60. Okay. Another thing, angles around a point add up to 360 degrees, and vertical angles are congruent. So let's say I had angles around a point. Here's my point right here. So here we go, I've got angles all around a point, four angles. All the angle measurements added together would equal 360 degrees. And by the way, vertical angles are congruent. Vertical angles are these angles on the opposite sides. For example, this is a vertical angle to this. So these angles would be equivalent to each other. Also, this angle is equivalent to this angle because it's also a vertical angle. On to one of my favorite topics with lines and angles. When two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, some really neat things happen. And you're probably thinking, transversal, oh my god, what is she talking about? All a transversal is, is just a line cutting through two parallel lines. Let me draw a picture. And you'll, now you're going to say, oh, you know what, Devorah, I've seen that before. Do you remember this? It's, you know, you'll usually see, oh, this is line one, oh, this is line two, they're parallel and you've got a line that goes through them. When you see something like this, there's some really cool things you can infer about the angles. As long as you have one angle measurement, you can find all of them. So for example, let's say I told you, hmm, this angle here is 60 degrees. Great, okay, let's find all the other angles. Well, we know because this is 60 that this has to be 120 because they're along a line, like we talked about. Great. And now we know that this one has to be 60 as well, because it's vertical. And this one has to be 120 as well, because it's vertical. And also, because they're along the line with the other angles. Okay, so this is 60 here. This is 120 here. Okay, but what about this bottom part? How can we figure out what those are? This is where another rule comes in. When you have two parallel lines cut by a transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. Those are the angles that I say, you know, are kind of... In